Transurfer and the Transurfing Curious. My name is Renee Garcia and this is Transurfing TV, guys. And today on Transurfing TV, I'm going to give you a little formula that I use when I start feeling as though I'm having reality anxiety or some kind of imbalance occurring from maybe excessive importance, either internal or external, and kind of a checklist that I run off in my mind that really helps me to just chill out. Because if you stop oftentimes and take a look at your external environment and your internal reality, the only thing that usually causes you to go off balance is what's going on upstairs, right? The, the internal dialogue, overthinking, again, applying excessive importance to something or having too high of levels of inner importance. This is really, really a big key in keeping yourself, again, chill and not really loaded up with a bunch of excess potential, needing things to play out in your way for you to feel satisfied or like you're getting what it is that you want, right? If you can just take a reality Valium <laughs> and whatever goes down is what goes down and you really get into the habit of managing your response to something maybe seemingly playing out in your reality against your intentions or somebody stepping on you in a way that triggers that inner importance, all that stuff, there's a way to manage all this stuff and it creates an environment that is pleasurable and your happiness is not contingent on external factors, right? This is such an amazing way to live. So I'm gonna get into all of that, but before I do, remember to like and comment on this video and subscribe. Please subscribe, guys. Your energetic contribution is greatly appreciated. Reality 2.0 on Teachable. Check it out and join us on the Facebook group, International Transserving Institute Facebook group, y'all. Okay, so reality value, what does that even mean? Well, it means when you're just chill and you're not being overtly affected by anything, either stuff going on external to you or stuff happening internally. Um, again, I have a little checklist that I have created in my mind that I fall back on. And usually even just this first step, as soon as I do this, quantify your needs. I'm gonna get into that specifically what it means in a moment. But usually when I get to a place where I am starting to feel elevated or anxiety levels start to go up or I start to feel the presence of balancing forces or me sort of questioning, oh, is this thing gonna happen? And what if it doesn't happen? And blah, 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 blah. As soon as I can stop myself, I see myself, I see my reality and just take that initial first step. It's oftentimes just calling it out that already eases a lot of those symptoms of sort of like excess potential in yourself to a place where you're uncomfortable, right? So even just getting to this first step is so big because you're stopping yourself and acknowledging what it is you're doing to yourself and your reality when you are creating excess potential, running on importance, needing to see a, an outcome play out in order for you to feel happy. Basically, the bottom line of it is anytime you feel the need to imply something on your external environment that you need to see that Thing play out in order for you to feel like you are getting what you want in this world. This is when we mess up as human beings, looking 
for that external happiness. If you can bring yourself back down to your, your, your center, right? Your center screen, I see myself, I see my reality, and sort of manage your internal world and your external world via these checklist items, it's like a no brainer. You can be on your way to what it is that's going to bring you some satisfaction, steps towards that goal, but you're already happy, right? You're not, you're not, uh, your happiness is not contingent on an external factor. That's the main thing. So one of the things that I left out when I made my checklist that's really my absolute go-to before anything else is anytime I feel that there is some kind of imbalance occurring or that I'm um, making my happiness contingent on external factors or anything like that, I realize that the best way to neutralize a lot of that stuff is just to take action. Action is, in my opinion, the antidote for anxiety. Anxiety for me often comes about or questioning if something's going to happen or again contingent, making my happiness contingent on my external environment. This is leaving it up to external circumstances to help me to feel to feel good and that's outside of my control what is in my control is the action that i can take right so as long as i'm continuously taking action it's like whatever's sort of bubbling there under the surface i just kind of throw a big bag of like baking soda on it. It just neutralizes it. And Vadim Zeeland talks about this a lot in Reality Transurfing and in the 78 Days of Practical Transurfing that action does neutralize so much. It is the answer for so much. So if you are feeling as though you are questioning things, questioning your external environment, questioning your internal reality, you're overthinking, you're not knowing if your goal is the right goal for you or what it is you're doing or any of that kind of stuff. As long as you're taking action, all of those answers, all of the, the information that you need to resolve, all that stuff is going to come to you in due time. Like, absolutely, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And as long as you can just continuously take action, it's you're, you're, you're already there, right? So this is the biggest neutralizer of all, maintaining consistent action. Um, my checklist, quickly, quantify your needs. So... In a video that I did a few months back um, called Abundance Sucks, <laughs> I talked about the value in me giving up the term abundance. I think that abundance really does create a lot of anxiety in people. And the reason for this is that Abundance, the term abundance is very ambiguous. And essentially what you're telling your mirror is that if you say, if you say to your reality, I want an abundance of something, I want a, an abundance of money, or I want an abundance of success. Essentially what you're saying is that you're lacking in abundance or a measurable amount of it, right? So then it puts you on that hamster wheel of like chasing after the thing, right? And abundance is again ambiguous. So it doesn't matter how much you make or how much success you get or how much progress towards the goal. If it's not quantified, the anxiety levels are going to continue to be high because whatever it is you gain is just not going to be enough. So it's like, it's like you're, you're pouring uh, water into a glass, but the level's never quite getting uh, to the top and you're just constantly pouring, 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 pouring. And this creates anxiety in my opinion. So the best thing that I ever, 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 ever did for myself, and this is primarily around finances and professional success, but it really extends to all areas of my reality is quantifying what my needs are. So as soon as I can quantify what my needs are, then I can go about um, achieving the levels of whatever it is that I've set 
for what part of my life. And I can actually feel a sensation of accomplishment, which is why I don't like the term abundance because it's like, okay, I want an abundance of money. Well, how do you ever feel accomplishment if you're just continuing to tell yourself, I want an abundance of money. So again, quantifying your needs is going to bring down all those levels of like um, anxiety. Am I getting somewhere? Is something actually happening? I'm not seeing progress, all that kind of stuff. Number one, right? Um, well, it's technically one number two because action's number one. Um, checking both inner and outer importance levels. This is a really big one as well. So many times in my past, I have applied, and I know this is like everybody's done this, Renee, come on, but we don't really look at oftentimes how much our importance levels wreak havoc on our reality, right? We know as trans surfers that importance levels throw things off, but like staying tuned in to how you are specifically affected by your importance levels and what they do to your reality, this for me is really big. I know that I do this in a few specific areas, like with my romantic relationship. Um, sometimes with my, my ambitious nature towards my professional goals, right? And I know that when my importance levels are too high in any direction where I typically apply importance, that reality starts to show me exactly what it is that I don't want to see, right? And this is where, this is where if you can grasp this thing and it's so simplistic and it's so known as transfers, like we obviously, we get this, right? But being able to really stop yourself in the moment and adjust and check your importance levels and realize that this is exactly what will um, cause you to experience the version of reality that you do not want to experience, right? So this is huge. Cleaning your layer of reality. Okay, big one, and I am a huge believer in this. I was introduced to this concept in the 78 Days of Practical Trans Serving, and it is so unbelievably helpful for me and my mindset. I have the things that I do for, for my professional life, with my, with my nine to five hours, right? With my home, I live and work at home. And I try to keep everything extremely organized and really just have what it is that I'm actively doing visible. Anything else is going to, like Vadim says, those small little things that you have laying about that are causing your mind to say, oh, I'll get to that when I have time, or oh, well, I hope that sometime I have the opportunity to work on that project. All that kind of stuff is just slowly bleeding you out of your energy. And it's also, in my opinion, causing anxiety. That's why my closet's organized. That's why my office is organized. That's why I keep a very um, robust to-do list, but I do not include items on my to-do list that I do not have the intention of fulfilling. Because if I'm going through my to-do list and I'm checking off items, I definitely don't wanna have a number of things on there that I'm just like seeing over and over that I'm not actually tackling. I want to feel effective in my reality and this is really my reality Valium, right? Anytime that I am getting bogged down by things that I'm seeing that I'm not proactively addressing, this is when a very low grade but noticeable anxiety level starts to starts to materialize, right? So making sure that my layer of reality is clean, both physically with my items to do and making certain that I don't have a bunch of stuff laying around that I'm thinking about but not being proactive in 
addressing or resolving or doing or any of that kind of stuff. Run your negative slide. Okay, so I'm a huge advocate for the negative slide. I know that it's a little bit controversial. Some people are like, why would I want to envision something bad happening? Or why would I want to envision um, not achieving my goal? The negative slide is not a place where you, and if you don't know about this concept, definitely go back and take a look. I did a video specifically on this, it's called negative slide. This is not a you running that negative slide continuously that you're going to be living in, you not getting you know, the, 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 the visual of you not getting what it is that you want. It's you running that negative slide once and realizing that it's okay if you don't succeed at your intention. It's okay if that thing doesn't work out because oftentimes that excess potential that we create, again, placing high levels of importance on an external event playing out in order for us to feel like we're happy or we got what we want or we're taken care of or whatever, this is this can create a lot of anxiety, right? So is, if you can run that version of reality, that you don't get what it is that you want and accept it while you're running that slide, then you can go about moving to that version of reality without a bunch of excess potential because again, excess potential is going to be the biggest way that you're going to achieve you not being successful in that thing, right? You achieving that version of reality that you did not want to see happen. So negative slide is huge, 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 huge. Lean on your guardian angel. This is a big one. We forget about our guardian angel. We forget about our inner observer. I actually bought this necklace because I believe, I don't know if you can see it, but I believe this is my um, this is my inner observer, the male face, and this is my guardian angel above here. And I keep this because, and I wear it all the time, because it helps me to remember that I'm not the only one looking out for an A, right? Again, if I put it all on me, inner intention, that's when I'm going to feel excessively like, pressured in showing up for myself, having to figure it all out, overthinking, over worrying, all that kind of stuff, I can fall back on these guys and simply let my world show me the way, right? And these guys were the ones who sort of notify me. So leaning on your guardian angel, leaning on your inner observer to help you work it out is huge. Read reality transferring steps one through five. This is the ultimate in uh, reality sedation. Read this book. Anytime I feel any sort of like, even if I don't know what's going on, but I'm feeling maybe not 100% my best, I will literally just open to a random page and start reading. And this chills me the fuck out, guys. It always does. And now that we have the audiobooks, you can simply turn on an audiobook on Transurfing TV, and it's the same effect. Get back in touch with this knowledge. And again, it's like neutralizing whatever it is that's going on in your mind that's causing you to feel as though reality's not okay. So this is my video on reality Valium. You can do all these things. You can do one of these things. You can do a combination of a few of these things. You can throw in your own, but it's about taking action, acknowledging when your thinking is not going in the right direction. Again, getting back to usually just calling it out. I see myself and I see my reality and taking this first step is enough for me to bring everything back down and realize what it is that I really want to achieve here. And that's feeling as though I'm living in the present moment. I have lots of energy to help me on my way to my goal and I'm feeling good about life and I'm enjoying the moment. Everything else is just noise. And when that noise volume gets turned too high, I take my reality Valium, I run through my checklist and I'm so glad I have these tool guy tools guys because it really has um, changed everything for me and my reality. I hope you are making use of them as well. 
So let me know your thoughts on this one, everybody. And remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.